One of my recent videos on building a walnut table generated a lot of requests for additional information on how I do my breadboard ends. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate just that. I'm going to show how I do my breadboard ends with tongue and groove, mortise and tenons, and drawboard joinery. After joining and planing the material to ensure it's perfectly square, I start by marking the location of the mortises. For a breadboard end the size of a standard kitchen table, I like to have three mortise and tenons. When deciding on the size of my tenons, I like to subtract an inch or two from each side of the table and divide by five, giving me three equal sized tenons with the same sized gaps between them. I wanted my tenons to be as long as possible and I knew I could get two inches deep with my router bit, so two inches it was. I cut my mortises using a router with an edge guide and a half inch spiral upcut bit. I start by plunging all the way down on both sides of the mortise before taking light passes to clean up the rest. You can either use a chisel to square up the ends of the mortises or round over the ends of the tenons. Using the same half inch spiral upcut bit, I cut the grooves for the tongue and groove on the router table in at least two passes. When marking the end of the table for the tongue and the tenons, I like to use a marking gauge. This helps to ensure I get a consistent marking and it also severs the grain, helping to reduce the possibility of tear out from the router. Using the same half inch spiral upcut bit, and router with edge guide, I cut the tongues on the top and bottom of the table. Following the hybrid woodworking method, I like to get the cuts close with power tools and finish them off by hand to ensure a proper fit. After the tongue has been brought down to the right size, I mark the tenons with the marking gauge and marking knife. Not only does it increase accuracy, it also creates a small cut or groove that helps when cutting them by hand. When marking the location of the dowels, I use an awl to help improve the accuracy of the drill and then use a sacrificial board when drilling to help prevent tear out. To quickly transfer the location of the dowels, I use a Forstner bit and carefully press it through the hole and into the tenon. To get the drawboard joinery, the location of the dowel on the tenon is offset by a 32nd to about a 16th of an inch towards the center of the table. This will cause the dowel to bend around the offset, essentially sucking in the breadboard end and holding everything tight. The dowel holes on the outside two tenons are elongated to allow for wood movement along the width of the table. During assembly, only the center tenon gets glued, while the outside two tenons are allowed to float. The drawboard joinery will keep the joint tight while allowing the table to expand and contract throughout the seasons. You can use a little glue on the top of the outside dowels to help keep them in place, but you don't want to overdo it and get glue into those joints. You want to make sure the bottom end of the dowels are shaped to allow them to go around the offset in the drawboard hole and that they are long enough to extend past the bottom and top of the surface. Normally I would use a flush cut saw to cut off the rest of the dowel, but mine has seen better days. So I used a Japanese pole saw and a paper towel to help protect the surface from getting scratched. Then clean up anything that's left with a sharp chisel or hand plane and give it a thorough sanding.
If you're getting ready to take on some breadboard ends, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comment down below and you can find a detailed article on my website. And as always, thanks for watching and stay safe.